This video is about the impact of grants and concessional loan in a project finance deal. Okay, so I'm preparing a mini course on concessional financing in project finance deal. And in this course, I'm going to show you how to build the different uh, concessional financing instruments like a grant and concessional loan in a project finance. I'm going to take you through the different steps on how to build that into the model. And um, I'm going to take you through a case study, which um, let me show you. It's a case study based on practical example. That's my style of teaching that I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you a case of a project, a solar PV project, and you are basically um, testing the amount of grant and the, the amount of concessional loan that is needed to make the project bankable, okay? But in this video, we're going to skip the part of these mechanical parts, and we're going to just stick to the scenario analysis and the different flexibilities that you need to see in a financial model when you are preparing for a um, application for a grant or when you are discussing and negotiating your tariff. So in this case, basically what I'm saying, let me go to the um, Excel model. So it's a fairly simple model. It has the build the typical building blocks of um, timing assumption, capex assumption, opex assumption. But what we need here and what we're going to focus here are the financing assumptions. Okay, we have the typical debt and equity, but we have also built a concessional loan and a grant into the model, and we also provide the flexibility to test the different. Um, options in the model for the grant. For example, I explained in the previous video that the grantors, sometimes they want to maybe uh, reduce the tariff for the project. The incentive is for the um, for the project to provide a lower tariff. That's why they provide a certain amount of grant to lower the tariff. Or they sometimes want to uh, support the sponsors. They want to basi basically incentivize sponsors to come and invest in the project, invest in the country. So they're going to say that, you know, the grant is available to reduce the equity amount. Okay. So first we're going to look at these, we're going to look at both of these cases, but before running all these scenarios, we need to look at the scenario where we don't have any grants, we don't have any concessional loan. And what is the situation without the grants? Okay. So in order to facilitate all these different scenarios analysis that we are going to perform, what we will do, what I have done is that I'm going, I put the critical parameters that I want to sensitize in the dashboard, or in this case, I called it output sheet. So basically the story of the case is that you have discussed with the concessioner and they have told you that uh, we want you to come and invest in the project. However, the tariff that we are going to give you is going to be five euro cents per kilowatt hour. Okay. And so this is a given tariff that you are now negotiating with the government. Okay. So now you want to go to the government and tell them that, okay, with this given tariff that you are tell you are giving me, uh, that we are negotiating now as part of our uh, PPA agreement, the power purchase agreement. So this five euro cents, when I uh, put it in my financial model, then this is the situation. I have my total project cost. I size my debt. Uh, we said in this case, we don't have any concessional loan. I'm going to need 4 million of equity. I don't have any grant in this scenario and you have given me a tariff of five. As you can see, my equity IRR is 3% and uh, the minimum DSCR is 0 0.9, okay? And this uh, uh, scenario without grant, without concessional loan is not bankable because in the case that I explained to you that uh, the shareholders, they require a minimum of 12% equity IRR as part of negotiation that they are doing with the government. 
And uh, the lenders, they require a minimum uh, DSCR of 1.3x. So as you can see, we can clearly see that under this situation, under this given tariff, this project is not bankable. By the way, a side note, I am using a tool that I'm borrowing from uh, Professor Edward Bodmer to facilitate this kind of scenario analysis, just the comparative study that we want to do with the grant, without the grant, how much grant, how much concessional loan. This is a tool that you can uh, download it from Professor Edward Bodmer's website and import the macro, and it's going to facilitate the scenario analysis. I'm going to put the link so that you can go and use it. I use it across all my project finance models, and I find it as a simple and useful tool. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to save this as base case, no concessional, okay? So I don't have any concessional financing. So this is my starting point. Now I want to come and test and see how much grant I need to make this project work uh, under this scenario. But before that, I want to tell to the grantor, to the uh, concessioner, what is the tariff that is needed if I don't have any concessional loan, okay? So I created a simple goal seek, and I'm going to explain all of that in the course. Uh, we're going to just run a simple goal seek to know how much is the tariff needed in order to get the equity IRR of 12%. And as you can see here, we have our 12% IRR and we have our um, minimum required DSCR, okay? So I'm going to show this one to them as well, and I'm going to say increased tariff case or something along these lines, okay? So in order for the project to work, if I don't have any concessional loan and con or grants, I need a tariff which is 6.4, but we know that the a concessioner told us that uh, they want five. So 6.4 is something that is high for them and they cannot afford. And their willingness to pay is five euro cents. Okay. However, it's a good information to show them that your five cents is not working if we cannot get a grant and if we cannot have concessional loan. So the next question to, an to answer is how much grant is needed? Okay. So now I'm going to come and I'm going to introduce grant in the model, okay? I'm going to say, okay, what if I have a 1 million grants, okay? Then you will see that, um, and I'm going to change the tariff also to 5 euro cents because that's what they want, okay? So 1 million is still not sufficient because IRR has improved, our ratio has improved. However, I still don't have uh, the 12% and the minimum 1.3. So what is the amount of grant that is needed? In this case, I run another goal seek to with the given tariff to come up with the sizing of my grants, okay? So I can see here that if I have 4.3 million grants, then to reduce the total project cost, then I have an equity IRR of 12% and my ratios are working. So I'm going to come and save this scenario as well. And I'm going to call it um, grant, okay? Grant sizing, let's say, okay? So now this is also saved and we can show them that this is the case if I have a 4.3 million grant. Okay, now what I want to do is I'm going to come and say, what if I test now the uh, concessional loan? In the previous uh, two videos, I showed you the differences between grant and concessional loan. As the name says, concessional loan is a facility, which is... Um, which is a loan, which has an interest rate, which has a tenor, so you need to repay the loan. And all these are the flexibilities that you need to include in your model regarding the concessional loan, the amount, the tenor, the grace period, the interest rate, whether the, the, um, the interest is payable or not. So there are many flexibilities de depending on the terms of the concessional loan that you can receive.
However, let's say it's a typical one with a 1.5% per annum interest rate and with a long grace period and a long tenor, okay, which is the purpose of a concessional loan is to be a cheaper loan as compared to the uh, typical um, senior or commercial loans, okay? So now I put my grant to zero and I'm going to do a goal seek now and see how much concessional loan under those, those terms that we just see together. What is the amount of concessional loan needed under the tariff, the given tariff? That will give me what my 12% uh, equity IRR. So that's the amount of concessional loan that I need. I need a, around 5 million concessional loan. So I'm going to put it as well here, and I'm going to say concessional loan, okay? And uh, here with the parameters that you are monitoring in this table, you know exactly what is active and what is not active under this scenario, okay? So that's also a good scenario to show. However, most of the time, the amounts of uh, grants that you uh, might um, be um, applicable is fixed. Let's say you have a 1 million grant only, okay? And you have your tariff, and then you can run your uh, concessional loan and uh, the goal seek for the amount of concessional loan. And you can also save that here, a combination, or you can call it mixed, mixed scenario, okay? So uh, this is a good table that you can put an email, put a doc, put it in a document, and you know start the negotiation with some numbers. And also having a dashboard or a summary table in your model is going to help you when you're live in negotiation to show what are the terms of these grants, what are the terms of these concessional loan, and whether it works for this project or not. So your arguments are. Be, are going to be based on some facts and some uh, facts that you have checked in your financial model. And it's an argument that everyone will understand because at the end of the day, a project finance deal, you need to have a win-win situation for all the parties involved. When you are in a legal discussion, you know, the lawyers, they're going to defend, you know, their client's perspective, right? They want to get the best deal for the clients. But when you are a financial modeler and you are working on a project, your goal is to make a win-win situation for all the parties involved. So you need to look at the project from different points of views, and you're gonna make sure you can come up with an optimized scenario that works for the lenders, work for the sponsor, work for the contractor, and all of them need to be satisfied. And you can show that uh, all these point of view under one platform or one tool, which is the financial model. So you can repeat this under this uh, second um, option as well. You know that in terms of the how you're using the grant, we can also, I also told you that the grant can also be used to reduce equity. You can also test that in the model and show it in the table and have different discussions around how you can use the grant, whether to reduce the equity or whether to reduce the total project cost. So that was uh, what I wanted to show you here, to show you the flexibility of a financial model when it comes to this kind of discussions. And I really like you to tell me if you're interested because I'm still preparing the materials for the course, for this mini course on concessional financing. So please, in the comment section, if you can let me know if you're interested in, um, in such a discussions and uh, whether um, uh, you're willing to sign up for a course, for this mini course. And I'm gonna include a half an hour uh, maybe one-to-one -one discussion with me as well as part of the course, if you register for the course. So I really want to know what you think about this idea. And also I want to know how much you are willing to pay for such a course. So if you're interested, please let me know in the comments uh, your opinion and how much you are willing to pay for such a course. All right, that's it for me. I will prepare, I will switch to another uh, topic for my next video and I hope to see you there. Thank you and bye.